Hey guys, how are you? Hey everybody, so we're here at the Four Arts Space and we're going to have a little group convo. Um, I'm with Susie and Brian. And um, so you may be wondering what this little orange bucket is all about. Well, for a while now, we have been um, writing down uh, things that we think um, would make great uh, helpful tips and our honest views about certain subjects, you know, in the arts. Some might be taboo, you know, people don't like to talk about certain things. I honestly don't think it should be taboo. In fact, I think that we all should talk about anything that we feel when it comes to the arts. Because who's better to help each other than us? We understand each other as artists. And, you know, whether you agree or disagree, there's something to be learned by that information, by your point of view, by your point of view, by my point of view. And then, you know, based on you guys' comments on what we talk about, you know, then there's your point of view. So we may learn something from something that you say. So we welcome your comments and, uh, I'll definitely get back to everybody if you're, you're directing a comment to one of the panelists that we're talking with. I will make sure that I, you know, have them check it out and respond. So, with that being said, who wants to do the draw? Ladies first. Thank you. All right. All right. So I'll read out loud. Yeah. Oh, so. This is very interesting because I was just talking to some friends about it. It's the question is, does too much social media spur depression and how to have a healthy balance? Yeah, that that's is a very good one. I think that one's very relevant. So does too much social media uh, spur depression and how to have a healthy balance? Yeah. So what do you think about that, Brian? <laughs> well, Coming from Subway, you know why I'm pointing it because you know Brian is not on social media. Uh, he doesn't do any of you know the Twitter or yeah, YouTube no. or I mean he gets on YouTube to watch it because that's programming, but he's not a Facebook or any kind of guru. So I think starting with you kind of spurs the question. What do you think about this subject in terms of why you stay off of it? Well, just on the outside looking in, yeah. I, I hear good and bad about it. So, um, personally, I, uh, <laughs> I just don't have, um, I just don't have enough time during the day to, to monitor all this stuff. Yeah. I mean, I'm busy doing other stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you thought about it though? Has it been something that you thought, well, maybe I might try this or that? I might one day. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my friends keep uh, egging me on to, to do it. And they tell me, oh, you're going to sell all your art on, on Facebook. And, you know, so I'm open to it. Yeah. Yeah. Just say. So, uh, what would you think for you being a novice and not and kind of being the outside looking in? What has been some of the things that you've seen or talked to other artists about? both the pros and the cons? Well, I, I, I just think social media is a tool and um, you can either use it the right way or the wrong way. Um, you know, I think if you use it the right way, it, it can be beneficial, um, not just in art or just just as a, as a, a means of communication. Yeah. But I, th you know, I do think, that, you know, everybody wants to have their like 15 minutes of fame, so to speak. <laughs> People will do anything to be on camera you know, uh, yeah. So, yeah, Speaking it's just a tool. You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, like you know, you wouldn't use a a, a screwdriver to, to drive a, a nail. You know, right. Um, well, that's what I think too. In terms of you know social media, you know, I I was seriously pushed into social media. It was, you know, everybody under the moon is like, nope, you got to have a Twitter account, you've got to have a Facebook. I mean, this was before Instagram and all that. But I was like, I don't know how to use any of that crap. I don't even, like, you know, I was busy trying to get 4Art Inc. up and running. Right. This is when Facebook and all that, you yeah. know, started coming out. Mm -hmm. 
And I didn't see the point of it. It wasn't something for me that I felt was uh, something I understood how it it met up with my artist program. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but today, <clears throat> on the flip side, now that I'm on, I, I don't know whatever happened to my Twitter account, I'm probably corrupt or deleted, but I do have Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn, but I don't, um, I don't feel like it's a job. I go on when I go on. It, right. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm on there for five minutes and I get off. Right. I don't spend all day flipping through. If I'm interested to see what you're doing, I go to your page. Or yeah. if it pops right up in my feed, then I'm going to look at it, read it, and see you know about the show or whatever you're talking about, and I'll give my feedback or whatever. Yeah. But on the flip side there is this sort of dark side of social media yeah. and when this question is read it does bring to me the depression that happens when you're on social media too long because it's a facade right you know you're looking um at a lot of faults <laughs> yeah mirrors there yeah. you know what i mean that people are promoting this stuff that isn't necessarily reality. Mm -hmm. Why it affects us is a psychology that I don't understand. Right. Why do I, why do I let that bother me? Do you know what I mean? I ask myself that. I mean, I'm an intelligent, thoughtful person, I think. Yeah. I think about things a lot of times before I react to them. But why, why does it affect me? Why does somebody's post all of a sudden put me in a in a different frame of mind I mean they let, let, they let it get to you right I, I mean I guess it yeah. I don't know that I let it but it does get to me yeah. for whatever reason so I do try to limit my time yeah. on social media because it's not that I'm jealous of anybody it's not that I feel um, envious or any yeah. of the seven deadly sins okay right. i uh, as a general run and you guys have known me for many years i don't have that really maybe it's an underlining thing in me and maybe it's in us all but i as an artist am always doing me i don't keep up with anybody else i'm not mm -hmm. trying to be or emulate my work to anybody else so why does certain things put me in a depressive mood. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's so it's kind of funny that we discussed last time that I started doing UX design, user design, which is basically um, the good side of it is used as interviewing users like people like you and me and designing an app or designing a website that helps them, that helps them navigate it better, that helps them use it faster and better. But the dark side is like, then that combined with like marketing and research, a lot of these companies, Facebook, you know, and then they bought out Instagram, Twitter, they are designed to keep you scrolling. They are designed to keep your attention and focus on their platform because the more users they have, the more data they have, and you are the product right. because we get to use these platforms for free, right? That's the trade off, yeah. that tool aspect right. you mentioned, Brian. And I think even though Robin, like I feel similar to you where I'm not trying to keep up with the Joneses per se, or I'm not like looking around me like, what are other artists doing? I'm gonna try to do what they're doing. We're still social creatures. And they know that psychologically, that if we see what else is out there, our mind is going to consciously or unconsciously kind of compare or just like think about, well, maybe I should blah, 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 because so-and-so is doing this, or just the, the inundation of it, right? It could just be five minutes here and there, but sometimes that little creep in your life, it's just like, I find myself where I'm like, I'm only going on for five minutes. <laughs> and then before I know it, I'm like, ooh, and I'm like, wait, wait, and my screen time shows it. It's like one hour later, I'm like, wait, how did that happen? Like time literally just got away from me. Right. Um, so it's, it, is, it, is a, it is a tool, but it's been designed to be seductive. It's been yeah. designed to pull us in and to keep us on it. So that's, that's the dark side of it. Now, that being said, like having that balance, I think having perhaps like 
before actually I worked for a small business and, and um, it was, she ran a, a paint and sip and a pottery studio. And one of my roles was doing the social media because it exhausted her mentally, which I totally understand as a business owner, the last thing you want to think about is being like, no, now I got to go on all these five different platforms on top of running my business. Right. But she was also very aware of how it affects my job performance in terms of like my, I'm supposed to be a paint instructor. So she's like, we're only going to do this three times a week. It's going to be scheduled. We're going to kind of pre-plan real quick, what, like a five minute like brainstorming session, take the photo, write it, boom, don't think about it anymore. Don't check about how many likes it is, has, don't check about this or that. It's, as long as we're consistent and we get the word out there that we exist, yeah. that's the purpose of it. She's like, we're not going to worry about any other metrics or try to get those ads or any of that stuff. Right, right. So I think that was a good, healthy balance because it was very cut and dry and none of our worries about how well we're doing was tied into, like our performance wasn't tied into how well that post did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 that's, you're absolutely correct on that. And I think even for me, uh, I just didn't grow up caring about what people thought. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I didn't grow up that way. So that was already built in me. So even when I, you know, opened the gallery, I was doing what I felt was right, you know, and I learned along the way, you know, it was blood, sweat and tears. And it, I wasn't doing it to get a write up in a newspaper, get, you know, a segment in the news and, you know, and I didn't uh, uh, go out to solicit it either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't me. You know what I mean? I'm not an attention hog. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't need it. You know, whatever I do has been made through pure, raw me. What you see is what you got. And I think that's what people loved about what I was doing. Mm -hmm. There was no surprises. There wasn't no, you know, strange, you know, change in my behavior, you know, yeah. it was the same. It was comfortable, it was real, it was raw. And that's the same thing that we're trying to do here with the YouTube channel, even though YouTube is also part of what? Social media. <laughs> yes. Okay, um, but I enjoy YouTube. In fact, I use YouTube a lot, probably more than the other platforms, only because I'm learning things. Mm -hmm. I can type in how to uh, fix a, stove or how to fix whatever yeah and i'm gonna learn how to fix it like the matrix you put it in and boom you're a karate master you know so i use it as a university and a platform to learn new things you know whether it's cooking or i i watch a lot of uh live art painting and creating mm -hmm. and um you know not certainly things that i would necessarily do but when you learn these things you look at your own art differently and you perform differently. Your your horizon, it gets wider and wider. Yeah. So now the possibility of creativity, it doesn't have any boundaries because you've learned so much and you absorb so much. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, you know, I can tell you for me in terms of like caring about, you know, this or that, the only things that I found myself caring about was being able to like with YouTube, have our own URL name. Mm -hmm. So we needed a hundred subscribers. So I pushed hard for it yes. and we got it. So, um, but now I'm laxed. I don't, you know, whatever happens organically with this channel is great. And I'm not gonna stress about it. It isn't my, what my activity is with the platforms because I do what I want, when I want, how I want. It's like you said, the scrolling and the BS that you see and the constant, you know, ups and downs of social media that does, number one, pull you in. All of a sudden now you're feeling part of some weird soap opera. <laughs> yeah, I, I just wonder what, what is the, for the average user of, say, Facebook, <clears throat> what is the average amount of time a day that they spend on it? A lot. That's a good question. That's something I, I, I yeah, think I mean, look up. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I know. Cause I, that, there, there's yeah. probably some people that are rolling it for five minutes a day, right? Yes. And there's probably people who run it for three hours a day, right? Well, I can tell you right now, most the, people's the phones 
maybe you too, we have an app. You know, you, if every phone has an app to all of the social media platforms. Yeah. My Facebook app is never signed out. No. It's always on. Now, I don't have any of the um, notifications on because I don't care to get notified every time somebody says something about whatever. But if I want to go on Facebook, I just press it and it's on. Yeah. But I can tell you that most of the people I know are on it all of the time. I can't give you a number. Or that's a what I'm afraid of. <laughs> I don't want to be sucked into that. Everybody. Right, and that's, that's what I mean. Yeah. And it does get you depressed. It does get you, when you see all this activity that's going on, it affects you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It affects you. And I'm like, why the hell am I so upset now? Yeah. You know, my mood has completely changed. Yeah. And I think it is a, um, it's, I think it's just become sort of a circus. And when you're a thoughtful kind of individual, you're constantly you know, checking in on yourself and checking in on the people that you love and you're really eyes wide open, then you do get affected by whether you like it or not. Yeah. You know, I, I, I wish I understood how to uh, de-emphasize the platforms in my life, but we need them. You know, we need them, and I can tell you for my own artistry, Facebook has been very good to me in terms of I use Facebook more than I probably even promote my website. Right. Because I've built it up now for over 10 years. I have collectors, I have new people, you know, ask friend requesting me, you know, all the time. And let me tell you, I go in and I check out who are you and why do you want to be my friend. Right. I mean, nothing to say, you know, anything bad about people, but honestly, you know, I don't, I don't know if this is somebody that's just scamming my page or, you know, I, I do my research. Right. And I suggest that to everybody. Don't just be friends with just anybody. Right. Yes. Yeah. And I've also gone in and cleaned up my account and defriended a whole lot of people. Why? Because of that question. Mm. It's too depressing. It gets on my nerves. I don't want to see it. Yes. Yeah. You know, if you don't have anything positive to say, I, I get it and that's, that's fine, but I don't have to look at it every day. You know, and I get people use the platform to reach out, and I'm all for that. But there's some certain people that, wow, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it yeah. gets to be a little much. They'll flood your feed with just all these, like, negative or even, like, you know, conspiracy. It's just, it gets out there. So I think what you mentioned about limiting your time on there, you can, like, block, unfriend, or even mute certain people. Let's say you want to have the ability to remain in contact with someone, but you're tired of them sending memes all the time on your face, you can just basically mute them or unfollow them where you're still friends with them, but you don't have to see that every single time you go in. So there are ways of protecting your psyche and just, you know, creating those healthy boundaries. Because yes. ultimately- and you can't and, be afraid to do it. Exactly, because it's like, you're right, on one hand, it, it does really help artists uh, put their work out there, it also helps artists connect with other artists. For me, my Instagram is purely, it's not a, a personal account. So it's not like I post, I made this, I, it used to be kind of more like, I made this cool dinner or something, but now it's like, it's, it's purely for art. And most of the followers I have are artists or are people who are interested in my art. So therefore it's very selective about who I'm following and seeing, and then also who's following me. So I think that way is a way to, for myself, to protect those boundaries. So I'm not suddenly seeing like unwanted news or someone's personal issues yeah. going up on my feed. Yeah. yeah. And there's, you know, there's another thing too, like I'm um, just touching base on what you're saying. You know, I, I do try to be positive on my page. Mm -hmm. I do. And every now and then I put up a quote that might just be something of reference that I'm going through. But then when I get people commenting negative things, I don't need that crap. I delete it. I take it right off because I'm not going to so hear that. people will respond to anything you say? Pretty much. Yeah. 
you know, I'll even put a quote that's positive. Mm -hmm. Like over the pandemic, I tried to, even though I was depressed as all heck, I mean, I hadn't been that depressed for a long time. Yeah. And it got to a point where I was crying every day. Yeah. But I kept that crap to myself. Yeah. You know, I deal with my own emotions for the most part. Right. You know, I reach out to those handful of people that we can help each other and I kind of deal with that. You know, but I was trying not to, you know, uh, to help me and help others who might be feeling the same way. So I'd find positive quotes and I would post them on Facebook yeah. just to lift myself and maybe lift somebody else. But then I would get all these people on there all grumpy and, oh, we'll, uh, you know, all these positivity quotes, this is not reality. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just trying to get people to have a good day. Yeah. Even if they've had a bad day, just to let them know it's okay, you know? But you can't win, man, yeah. you cannot win. And I get it, and I would tell them, I'm like, look, I get it that you're grumpy, and maybe you don't want to feel it, then don't read it, dude. Don't read it, it ain't for you. Yeah. <laughs> it isn't for you. You know what I'm saying? But that's the kind of stuff that yeah. you go through, you, yeah. you know? And so you have to, that, that gets to you. Yeah. You know? Or you see other people posting stuff and you know that their whole life is just a facade of, you know, unrealness. Yeah. <laughs> and it just, I don't want to see it, man. I don't want to see it. You be how you want. Maybe it I, makes them feel better. Maybe like, it makes you it, feel better. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I just don't want to <laughs> see it. And if I unfriended you, you know, it's just the way it is. Yeah. I don't make an apology for it. Yeah. You know, you can unfriend me. If you don't like that I'm putting, you know, uh, uplifting spiritual quotes, then unfollow me, my man. I mean, it's okay. Yeah. I, you ain't gonna hurt my feelings. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't even like being around people day to day that are negative. Mm. You know, I, it's, like, it's just like, okay, go away, or I'm gonna go away, you know? Because, yeah. you know, and we all get down. Yeah, we all so, I don't want to have a computer either. You know? time, type of thing. <laughs> but when it's all the time, like I said, I keep a lot of stuff to myself. Maybe it's healthy, yeah. maybe it's not. I don't really care. Yeah. I have to deal with it somehow. Yeah. You know, I try to deal with it in a positive way when it comes to pull, putting my hand out into the virtual world. Yeah. I try to do it in a positive way. Not everybody takes it that way. So if they're not going to take it that way, I, I shut it down because I'm not going to listen to you banter at me when I'm trying to make myself feel better and I'm trying to make others who might be feeling the same way I'm feeling. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, we're in a virtual world. Mm -hmm. You're going to take it how you take it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the kinds of things that you have to be prepared for. Yeah. Because otherwise, I'm not going to just, you know, not say things just because it's gonna yeah. upset everybody you know who are humdrum and a grump yeah it's not like the tv commercials no <laughs> everybody's uplifted yeah <laughs> well it's like it's like to i think a lot of people if you really paid attention you probably have is it uh it seems like competition and look at me look at me myself yeah, and i and yeah, that also gets on my nerves <laughs> So, you know, it's just, I'm not trying to hate on people. I'm just like, look, you do you. I'm happy that yeah. you do you. But, you know, like you said, for our own mental health, there's certain things that you got to do on social media to kind of, you know, create your own virtual world that you feel like you fit in. Yeah. You know, add people that you like, delete the people that you don't. Just the same as in real life, <laughs> for the that same, aspect at least. Absolutely. The, the, I, I know the word curation might seem kind of cold, but to be honest, it's it's a matter of deciding again those healthy boundaries. Like who is, who who is mutually beneficial and worthwhile to have in your life, whether in real life or virtually, and who is you're not they're not mutually uplifting each other. If someone's just constantly bringing you down. 
or you know again it's okay to have down days but if they're constantly debbie downer from like yeah. snl skin yeah, yeah. then it's like okay maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe i need to draw those boundaries and, and be and i think as artists too, at least speaking for myself i feel like i'm a, i'm like a sponge i just tend to absorb my yeah. environment really easily so it could be a good thing like if i'm out in nature or if i'm surrounded by people who are loving and encouraging it's really great and i feel that language. more yeah. but on the on the flip side if i'm around certain things or just you know during the pandemic we're just hearing those streams of bad news constantly and you know we're doom scrolling mm -hmm. or watching um television like news constantly and it was just bad news after bad news then that affects my psyche as well and that's why again it's like learning to just be like no i'm only gonna go on when i'm ready to search for something or somebody and that's it yeah. i'm not gonna make it come to me and, and try to drag me into the world i only use it when i want to yeah and i mean like i said it's you know uh social media just like anything has its place and I think if you use it in a wise way, then it's a wonderful tool. Will you get caught up in some of this stuff? Yes. Yeah. It, it's designed to catch up. Yeah. It is designed and now they have the reels, you know, and you can actually get on and see these shorts and a lot of them are entertaining, but they take up a lot of time because you're just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. You know, some catch your eyes, some don't. You just, yeah. you, the next, like you said, next thing you know, you're like, what the hell have I been doing for an hour? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what you've been doing. Yeah. You know, and then I have a headache. You know, because, you know, you, we wear glasses and we're looking at the screen and we're looking at our phones yeah. and that's even smaller, you know, and I think I'm going blind just, you know, and I try to get away from it and say, okay, today I'm not going to be on my phone. I'm not going to be on the computer, you know, and I'm trying to get to a point where it's all strategic, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm not saying that there's people out there who don't need social media to reach out to other people because for whatever reason they don't have it yeah. next door or in their life and I feel for them I'm just saying as an artist as artists you know um, like you said uh, Susie that we are sponges and the basis of a lot of our work is based on the world around us and what we've absorbed from it that day yeah but you know technology has changed that absorption rate and you are able to absorb it quicker and you're absorbing it in a way that makes absolutely zero sense because you're not sitting in a room with somebody you're not feeling their woe you're not you know saying you know i'm sorry brian that you feel that way yeah. you know yeah. hopefully I, you know here's a hug yeah you can't do that yeah you can't do that on social media and then it just becomes a platform for uh unsolicited banter so this person feels bad now they're getting positive and negative comments yeah. it's make them feel worse you know who knows what happens after yeah. that, God forbid. So I'm just saying that it does have an effect. And I think that everybody needs to really find a way to use it in a way that benefits them on a more of a positive note than a negative one. Yeah. Um, so do you guys have anything else to say on that subject? I just say, uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, on Netflix there is a very interesting documentary called Social Dilemma and um, it features former employees from places like Facebook and Google and Twitter and they personally speak on their work experience and how much intentional design goes into these platforms again, to, to grab your attention, to get more advertising, to, gar uh, to garnish your data. It's very eye-opening for those who weren't aware of it. I kind of knew, but I didn't realize to that extent. Um, so I think that was a really good one. And it's, it's, I think, balanced enough, and it also touches upon 
the, um, the psychological impact it has on younger audience members, because like, we're all like, what, 70s and 80s kids? Mm -hmm. So we're 70s and 80s kids, so we had a segment where we did it, we weren't growing up with all this technology and completely immersed in it. Whereas like, I have a half brother who's seven years old, and he used an iPad since he was two, unfortunately. So he, his, I'm worried about his developing mind because they are trying to target these younger audiences now because they know that's the next generation of consumers for them. So I think that's a really good, uh, Social Dilemma is a really good and eye-opening documentary for that. I can tell you what, if I ever won the lottery, I would buy an old village town and it would be a home for artists where we build our own stuff. We really, you know, get back to the basics. You know, maybe we have internet, but it's up to you if you use it or not, you know. But yeah. you know what, I, I have that in my dream. You still it's have like, a YouTube channel. It's like yeah. the, older, the, the older I get, <laughs> yeah. the older I get, the more I want like, like to be out in the country, yeah. out where, you know, I'm building a fire. Yeah. Like I watch on YouTube these like old world that's happening today, you know, like in Russia and all different places where they're, you know, they still have a wood stove yeah. and they build the fire so they can make their cakes and their yeah. baked goods or their dinners or whatever. They're going to the spring, they're carrying barrels of water back home, you know. And I think to myself, wow, that's so cool. It just seems so peaceful to me, you know. Living I get off the that land, yeah. living off the land and just hearing the birds in the background and the leaves of the trees and you know, just simpler ways because I feel like now we've become such robots. Yeah. Well, with that being said, guys, you know, I appreciate that y'all turned in, tuned in uh, to watch this segment. And, you know, we probably only scratched the surface of this topic. I mean, it really is, uh, it goes deep. Um, but we would appreciate any of your comments. Um, and like I said, uh, if you're directing it to any one person, I'll make sure that they know to get on and uh, reply to you. So in the meantime, you know, subscribe if you like our channel um, and you like. By the way, uh, maybe in the comments, should I or should I right. be on uh, social media? Should Brian? <laughs> Get on social media. Yes. Count on you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a vote, people. But anyways, give us some thumbs up. And um, we appreciate if you'll share our channel with other people. This channel is going to grow organically. And we're just going to continue to do what we do. Uh, but we appreciate you getting on and uh, giving us a little attention. So thanks, guys, for coming in. I appreciate you. And um, we'll talk again soon. Bye, guys. Bye.